Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. As you might be able to tell, today is all about these chili peppers. Now you'll notice that I've potted them on again since you last saw. They were only potted on for the first time about three weeks ago, so it's a little bit soon to be putting them in such big pots, but the reason for doing that is just I could tell a lot of them were getting really root bound and they wanted to be in bigger pots. I think that's because a lot of them were too leggy in the first place, but they're looking a little bit happier now. And I've been bringing them out to harden them off every day in the sunshine. So they're used to the wind and the sun and they've been living in the conservatory at night, which does get quite cold. So hopefully they're pretty well hardened off now. And today's task is getting them <laughs> into the greenhouse. It's gonna be difficult to fit them all in there. We're gonna to have to do a bit of reorganization and actually transporting them there in the first place might not be that easy as well. <laughs> so we'll do that and if there's time, I'll give you a little bit of an update on how the different varieties are doing. Wish me luck. <laughs> so after probably the most careful drive of my life, we've made it with minimal slippage. I think this is the only one, but that's okay in there, isn't it? Right. <laughs> now the fun begins as we go and have a look at the greenhouse. Oh, the other day as well, when I was asking about solutions for my brassicas, this is what I need, isn't it? Proper cage. Look at what these guys have got set up. Very jealous. First two bags. Second lot. And the last ones. That wasn't too bad, actually. Maybe, maybe I should have grown some more. I won't be saying that in a second. Let's have a look in the greenhouse and I'll show you what's in there at the moment. Well, what's inside? I would love to say I've been super organized and had it all laid out and ready. This main kind of area, these two potting tables where the majority of the chilies are gonna go, there's a load of stuff over here at the moment. And there's space for four plants down there. And I'm gonna have space on the floor for another four plants a bit later in the year, but they're not quite ready to go into the quad grows yet. That's their final pot. And I'll show you all the actual stuff that's growing in here. Maybe next episode we'll do a full tour and I'll talk about it. But for now, I've really just got to focus on <laughs> getting the peppers in and making some space. Okay, so here we have the potting tables are spare and the shelves might be able to take a few while they're babies and everything else has been relegated either to these shelves or we've even had to put a few on the sleeper down there, which actually works out quite well. Although I am a little bit worried they'll get caught by slugs, but um, it's time for the moment of truth. <laughs> I keep trying to delay it. I'm really nervous to find out whether or not the plants will actually fit on here. Let's give it a go. over the moon. <laughs> I, I was really worried that even at this small stage they wouldn't all fit in. That would have been really bad news because obviously these are still tiny at this point. The pot sizes, we're going to qu quadruple this I think. Yeah, up to 10 litres. Um, so I've got some 7.5, some 10 litres. So their pot sizes are going to get dramatically bigger. And of course the plants, tiny at the moment, but they will grow into these massive bushes that take up a good chunk of the greenhouse. But I'm not too worried about that for now. And <laughs> the main reason is because I don't plan these things, okay? I haven't measured out the greenhouse for how many plants I can fit in. I'm just gonna cram as many as I can in here. If needs be, what will probably happen is I'll end up putting a load on the floor, just in the middle of the greenhouse. Maybe I'll try and elevate them a little bit, but um. We're gonna make it work, it's gonna be great. And as well, I'm not too worried because not all of these plants are super precious to me, okay? There's a few that I'm less kind of uh, 
you know, invested in, shall we say. So the ones that I really care about will get the best care, the biggest pots, the most love and attention. And there'll be a few like the starfish, which I'll probably neglect a little bit. They'll get smaller pots, take up a bit less space. And we're gonna have eight of these, remember, in the quad grow, hopefully, in about a month, maybe five, six weeks. Um, hopefully they'll be ready to go into their final pots. So I'm over the moon. <laughs> and at the moment they fit in these nice little trays which makes it convenient for watering. Watering, no doubt, will become the main issue with these later on as they get bigger and bigger. But for now, I'm just gonna enjoy it. <laughs> and let's have a little look at some of the varieties we've got and have a look at how some of them are doing because they're not all doing amazing. In terms of the general health of the plants, I think pretty happy. They're definitely looking a little bit too pale I would like it if they had a much darker color. As they kind of get more and more sun and they get more and more healthy, they will turn from this kind of pale green slash yellow. You know, there's a lot of yellow in this into a really nice dark green. But in terms of their growth form now, they're starting to bush out a lot. They're not quite as leggy. And generally, they're looking pretty good. They haven't put on much growth since I repotted them, but that's just because I've been hardening them off. I've been really kind of hitting them quite hard with the sun and the wind. So they've not been in the best position. A few of them, like this starfish yellow, has just a little bit of kind of leaf curl and kind of wind burn, I think. But generally, the, most of them are free of any issues. There's no edema, um, no kind of paling or, you know, turning properly yellow. So I'm pretty happy. Let's talk about the varieties. So I think to start off, we'll start with the success story. And I think the ones I'm most happy with are these, the Reaper Douglas. Oh, I thought something blew over then. <laughs> Just the bags outside. But these are looking really fantastic. They've got a really nice, dense, bushy growth. This one's just got a slight bit of yellowing, but generally they've formed these really nice dark leaves. They've got a lovely kind of purple stem that runs through the middle of the leaves. It's not called a stem, is it? It's called something else. But, um, you know, these are looking really healthy. And I think they're one of the ones I care about the most. It's a really interesting variety. Reaper cross with a seven pot dougla. Two of the hottest peppers in the world. And I've only got two of these out of the three that I planted. So these two are quite precious to me. I should have mentioned, as well as hardening these ones off at home, what I did is I bought up this small cayenne, and you saw this in my last video actually, but I bought this up just to test to see how they would cope with the kind of cold in the greenhouse and the temperatures in here, and this one is looking okay. It's definitely in need of repotting. It's got a lot of um, leaf curl and a little bit of kind of discoloration on the leaves, but you can see it's doing really well in the sun, and hopefully you can see it's just starting to put out some side shoots which in a tomato you would pick off, but in a chili is a really good sign that you're developing a nice bushy growth. What's up next? One of the coolest ones that we've got on the go. This is my CGN19198, which I always struggle to remember. But this one is a super interesting looking pepper. It grows with this very kind of tall, it often looks very leggy, but that is just the way it grows. And this is a really interesting one because it's being cultivated from a kind of wild variety and notoriously difficult to germinate. So a really cool, challenging pepper. Got some very interesting looks. Very keen to see how this one goes on. Next up, we've got this one, the orange habanero, which is one that I've grown for a few years now. I just really love it. it comes out really nice in sauces with this kind of citrusy burst. And this one again, looking really healthy. The, the, the way that the Chinens varieties grow is just so cool. These big broad leaves and these kind of nice thick bushy plants looking really healthy. There is one of these which is starting to look a little bit sad actually. A bit of kind of yellowing, a bit of uh, kind of deformities in the leaf, bad coloration. But I'm hoping this one will persevere and kind of come right in the end. And that's because I want as many of those peppers as possible. The Ahi Fantasy, this is one of those ones um, which got a little bit leggier. Uh, 
I'm not super keen on growing loads of these. So a couple of these plants will probably get a little bit of the smaller pot treatment. But this is meant to be a really interesting pepper in terms of taste. Real love it or hate it. So I'm keen to try, um, but I'm not gonna put loads and loads of time and effort into these ones, just in case it turns out it's a hate it pepper. Next up, we've got the Sugar Rush Long Peach. Oh, I'm really hoping I get a good crop from these. These are meant to taste amazing. That super sweet flavor, as the name suggests. And this one, generally looking pretty healthy. That same kind of slightly leggier growth structure. I'm hoping with the sun on it, it'll really start to bush out. A little bit of kind of yellowing right in the stem. I'm not sure if maybe I gave them a little bit too much water when I potted them on because a few of them have got a little bit of yellowing but I'm not too concerned. And the next one, we have this furry little sucker. This is a farmer's market jalapeno, not to be mistaken for a normal one. These have the weirdest kind of brown shriveled up fruits. They look more like a potato than a chili. These ones doing pretty well. Once again, a little bit leggy. I'm hoping they'll start to bush out now. And one of the ones I'm not too invested in once again, <laughs> I'm kind of growing these for the novelty and because they're part of the Chili Chump seed kit, but hopefully we'll get one really good plant out of those. This next one, the cayenne, the classic chili pepper. One of my favorites, the best bang for your buck that you can get in terms of flavor, as well as a nice bit of kick, amazing sauces. Um, these ones are doing very weird things though. For weeks and weeks now, they've had a significant amount of leaf curl. And no matter what I do, they won't uncurl their leaves. I, I was worried at first it was underwatering, so I gave one of them loads and loads of water. That seemed to make it a little bit worse. So I'm not too sure what's going on with these, and these were suffering really bad, looking like they were super root bound. These ones starting to set a lot of flowers. This one's got a little one here, but I'm just gonna pinch out. You don't need to pinch them all out, but when they're this young, this kind of early stage, it's probably worth doing so. So a little bit concerned about the cayenne. It's one of the only ones where we have more than three plants. And I think I'll put one or two of those in the quad grow because one of those did really well in the quad grow last year. And just up here on this shelf, I've put our peach ghosts. Now these are looking really good as well. Once again, they've got that same kind of slight yellowing on the new growth that I was just talking about. So I think that might be where I've overwatered it. I'm really hoping that doesn't do too much damage. But once again, just beautiful compact growth structure on this. All the little side shoots are just starting to bush out. So it should turn into a really nice, healthy plant. I'm quite precious about these as well, because these are one of the ones that I've grown from homegrown seed. Grown from homegrown seed, yep. The cayenne plants as well were my own kind of homegrown peppers. So really invested in this. This will get a lot of love and attention. Speaking of my own seeds, where is the mystery pepper? I've lost it. And my poblanos. I'm missing some peppers. <laughs> I've just remembered, I left some in the car. <laughs> I thought I had more. There's some on the driver's seat. Let's go. God, I really hope they're okay. They've been in there a little while now, absolutely baking, probably. Ta-da! What's in here? Let's have a look. So in here, we've got six more peppers, the Nortenos and our Poblanos and Mystery Pepper. Let's get them in the greenhouse. Okay, all right, we're back in the greenhouse. I had a right little panic then. Let's see where these are gonna live for now. I think they should all just be able to perch kind of on this little part of the bench, which I had expected would have some plants on, and now we know why. <laughs> so this is the one I was looking for, the mystery pepper, the, the kind of my prize pepper, my pride and joy, which I cruelly just forgot about in the car. <laughs> but this one is looking really good. It's got a little bit of kind of wind burn. This leaf has gone a little bit dry and crispy where they were kind of being hardened off, but generally really lovely, nice dark growth on here. Leaves are looking really healthy. I'm so 
so excited about this plant. I really hope we get some nice fruits and I hope that I can harvest the seed because if you've missed it, I speak about this all the time, but this is a pepper which is a total mystery to me. The seeds came out of a kind of mixed Caribbean hot packet, I think. Um, most of those were kind of scotch bonnets, but that one came out this massive red, lush, sweet fruit, the, the nicest tasting pepper I've ever had. And it only set like four fruits. So I think it's a bit of a weird, unstable cross, maybe. That uh, might be me being kind of optimistic, but um, yeah, if we can grow that again, I'll be so happy. And Poblano competition, well, I've seen a lot of other people's poblanos and <laughs> they're a lot bigger than this. Um, I mean like quite a lot of chili growing groups and just generally all of my peppers are a lot further behind everyone else's. I think the light that I had was okay for the seedlings but not the best, you know, they've not had the best start but hopefully now they're in the greenhouse we'll start to see them really explode. This one, the Ahi Norteño, Norteño? It's not got an accent on the end, I don't know. This one, part of the Chili Chump seed kit, they're looking pretty okay. Pretty standard, you know? And then, last, and well, you say last but not least, these are sort of last but least. These are the starfish peppers. Uh, I've got six of these, three yellow, three red, and these seeds were a complete freebie. So I'm kind of growing them on because I'm interested, but oh my goodness, oh, we've got the first aphid. Oh, folks, it's my first aphid. Oh. Hopefully you can see, there he is, the little blighter. The good news is this one has wings, which means it's probably a recent arrival to the pepper. If you know anything about aphids life cycles, they're mostly cloned. So you get one like this that lands and then it will start to clone. And then once the plants get too busy, too full of aphids, that's when they grow wings and start to fly off and look for other plants. So I'm gonna get rid of this one and hope it's not the start of a bad time. The aphid has been dispatched. Now, like I say, these are lower on my priority list because they're freebies, but I still don't want them getting an aphid infestation and spreading it to my other plants. This one in particular though, this individual, it's interesting because look at the size of it compared to, I mean, this is one of my other tallest plants. It dwarfs them. So this is the first most leggy one that I had and it was getting so leggy that it fell over. So I gave it a bigger pot before everything else and it sort of started to explode a little bit. But if you actually compare it with most of the plants, it's actually about the same stage. When you look at the number of leaves, it's just that these ones are more compact, which is what you want. It's a healthier kind of plant. And this one, while I was hardening it off, was getting blown about like crazy in the wind. And it's got some pretty significant leaf burn. You can almost see through that leaf, I think. So um, yeah, kind of interesting though, to see how it's developed and changed. But yes, we've got six of the star starfish and with space at a premium. I imagine those ones will be getting some smaller pots. But that's it, that's the peppers. I'm really happy. They're mostly looking really good. There's a few small issues, but nothing that I'm majorly concerned about. And these guys should be happy here in their new home for a good little while before I've got to worry about this side of the greenhouse. And I'll show you what's in this next episode. But hopefully you enjoyed this little chilly update Thank you ever so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you again next time. <laughs>